Hi, in this video we'll look at the components of a complex algorithm. Before we start, make sure that you've watched a video or read a book so that you can answer these questions. What is an algorithm and why are they important to computer programmers? Once you've done that, it's time to continue. Just to remind you, an algorithm is a process or a set of rules that are followed in sequence to solve problems. Some examples might include a recipe or an instruction manual for assembling a chair or a manual for setting the time on your video recorder. Of course, there are algorithms written in computer programming languages also. So the simplest kinds of algorithms are just sequences of steps. A recipe is often uh, laid out as a sequence of steps. Here we've got something quite uh, simple. On the left you can see a box with some text in it with the beginning and the end of an algorithm. And the algorithm just consists of the steps do A, do B and do C. And we've represented this over on the right in a flowchart. Again, there's a beginning and an end to the algorithm and within it we've got the steps A, B and C. These are executed, carried out one at a time from start to finish in a sequence. And that's the basic component of any algorithm, a sequence of instructions. Now, by A, B and C, we could mean anything. So if this was an algorithm for getting ready to go to work in the morning, then A, B and C might be get dressed, eat breakfast and brush your teeth. But that could be anything really. It might be an algorithm for assembling a chair, in which case the elements of the algorithm would be things like take the screws out of the packet, get a screwdriver, put the screws into these particular holes, tighten them and so on. Now sometimes in a sequence we might find that groups of instructions appear together more than once. So in this algorithm here we can see do A, do B, do C and then we do A again and we do B again. So twice, labelled or highlighted in blue, we can see that B follows on from A. Over on the right in the flowchart, I've grouped A and B together. So we can see again we've got A, then B, then C, then A, then B again, and then we end the algorithm. Now in cases like this, because we know that A and B happen together, it makes sense for us to combine them into what's called a module. A module is just a unit, a little package if you like, that has a simple sequence of instructions within it. So we take out the instructions A and B in that order and we put them into the module Z. You can see that over on the right of the slide, I've made up a new box for module Z and I've put instructions A and B in sequence inside there. Now a module also could be called a function or a procedure depending on the book or the person you're talking to. So now our complex algorithm in the large box over on the left which had uh, five instructions A, B, C, A, B can be replaced with a simpler algorithm that begins and then we just do Z, we do C and we do Z again. And we can see that Z actually involves doing A and B. So we've been able to take out the A and B sequence, make it separate from the main algorithm, and we just use it twice. That means we're much less likely to make a mistake um, in the A-B sequence because we only have to check that Z is correct. And once Z we know is correct, we'll never need to write A and then B in order again. We just use Z. So here's another way of representing this using the flowchart this time. We've got an algorithm with only three main components, Z, then C, then Z again. Three main instructions in the sequence. And Z, as we saw before, is a module over on the right hand side which just consists of performing A and B in sequence. If you like, you can think of it like this. When we call upon the uh, computer, whether that be a person or a machine, to execute Z, they go away and they do A, then they do B, and then they come back and they've now finished doing Z, and then they do C. And then 
we ask them again to do Z in the main algorithm. So they go away and they do A and then they do B and then they come back and now they've finished Z and then they can finish the algorithm. Now sometimes we want to do something more than once. Here is a simple algorithm where we do A three times. Do A, do A, do A. Now if you're only doing something three times it's not too hard just to write out do A, do A, do A and repeat the text three times or in the case of the flowchart repeat the box three times. But if you wanted your algorithm to repeat this a thousand times or a hundred thousand times or millions of times you don't want to be writing out do A, do A, do A, do A all those times. Firstly, you're likely to make a mistake. Secondly, it's boring. And thirdly, well, there are much more elegant ways of doing it. What we want to do instead is use this idea of iteration or repetition or looping to simplify the algorithm. So here's how we represent this next component of an algorithm, iteration. You can see in the algorithm where it's written in text on the left, we just simply say loop three times and then we've got curly brackets and within them we've got do A. So this algorithm will execute all of the instructions in the loop, in the brackets, three times. That is, it does A three times. We can think about this in terms of the flowchart on the right also. We've just got a grey box around the A that says in it, repeat three times. So we're going to do whatever's in the grey box three times. That's iteration. Now, we can of course combine modules and iteration. We don't need to treat these things separately. So here's an algorithm that has both a module, module Z again, and the loop or the iteration. So we loop three times performing Z, where Z is the module A and B, or consisting of instructions A and B. So this will do A, B, A, B, A, B, and then it will end. Here's another element of a complex algorithm. It's called selection. So sometimes we want our algorithm to do one set of things under some conditions and to do a different set of things under another condition. So for instance, if you're getting dressed in the morning, you might look out the window and wonder if it was raining or not. If it is raining outside, then when you get dressed, you might carry out, if you like, a module preparing for the wet. And in this case, you might put on gum boots and find your umbrella. If it's not raining, then you might dig out the high heels and put on a sunset, a uh, sun hat. Sorry, um, getting ready for a sunny day. So this is selection. We choose based on some condition. In this case, the condition is whether or not it's raining, and we go one way or the other based on our answer to this question. We can write this selection in the algorithmic form uh, we saw before in text. If it is raining, do prepare for wet, which is a module. Otherwise, do prepare for the sun, which is a different module. Then we're finished. Now, this it is raining is actually the condition of the selection. So we have here the choice in text. If something is true, and do something, in this case prepare for wet. Otherwise, we do something else. So let's throw away a lot of this detail. Here we've just got the selection part of the algorithm and I've removed prepare for the wet and prepare for the sun and just replaced them with do A and do B. So again, there's the selection and everything inside this bracket is the condition on which the selection depends. So in this case, we've got it is raining. Now, this is what's called a Boolean condition. It will evaluate to either true or false. And if it's true, then we execute the instructions underneath the if, in the brackets, if you like, underneath the if. Otherwise, we'll execute the alternative instructions, which in this case means do be. So a Boolean condition is one that evaluates to either true or false. It's named after a mathematician called Bool, but we'll leave that for another video. Here is the selection represented in the flowchart. So we can see in the central diamond we've got the question, is it raining? And then to the left we've got yes, and to the right we've got no. Um, 
what we can see when we look at this flowchart is the split quite clearly into two different paths. We either take the left path or the right path and we'll do something different depending on which path we've got but we'll end up at the same place finishing the algorithm. This is just a different way of representing the same algorithm. There we go, just highlighting the selection there. Now, here we've got a different algorithm again represented as a flowchart. You remember before we had a loop that repeated A some number of times. I think it was three. In this case, we've also got a loop, but it repeats a hundred times. The iteration is the return back to the place before A. That is, we're going round and round and round A multiple times. Now, in this case, we've got selection incorporated into the loop as well. That is, we will repeat this loop a hundred times by asking after each time around the loop whether we've been around it a hundred times yet. So the first time we'll go through, we'll execute instruction A, then we'll ask the question, has this been repeated a hundred times? The answer will be no, because we've only done it once. So we iterate back over A. We go back, up, follow the arrow, and we execute A again. Then we come again and we ask the question, have we repeated this a hundred times? That is, we're checking this condition to see whether it's true. And if the answer is no, which it will be no, then we'll go back up again for the second time and we'll do A another time, third time. And then again, we ask the question, we check the condition, have we repeated this loop a hundred times? And eventually, of course, we will have repeated the loop a hundred times. The answer will be yes, and we'll drop down to the end of the algorithm. What might you want to do a hundred times? Well, if you're a centipede, maybe you want to put on a shoe a hundred times. So we wouldn't then need to write out the instructions on how to put on a shoe. We could have a module that explains how to put on the shoe, and we just repeat this module a hundred times in a loop with a condition, checking to make sure that it's done the correct number of times. So they're the main components of a complex algorithm. There are modules, that's groups of instructions that have usually got a name that we can reference in the algorithm. There are sequences of instructions, which are carried out one after another. There's iteration, which refers to looping or repetition of components of the algorithm. And there's selection, which refers to when we choose to execute one sequence of instructions or another based on the truth of some condition. Why don't you have a go at writing an algorithm yourselves? You can do it in flowchart form or you could do it in plain text if you prefer. And make this algorithm one to sort a shelf of magazines one at a time from tallest to shortest. See how you go. Thanks for watching.